Welcome everyone. Welcome sales superstars to this webinar. I'm very, very happy to welcome all of you and give a hand here for you guys joining us today in this webinar about the science behind cold calling, where we are going to share the playbook with you, all the tactics. And I'm very, very happy to welcome you guys all of here. If you are in your chairs at home, get out of your chairs. Get yourself warmed up here. Antonio, very, very happy to have you here as co-host and us, our main speaker. We'll introduce you as well and get out of your chairs, everyone, and get started here with some great energy in this webinar where we are sharing with you guys the science behind cold calling as a playbook, a lot of topics which we are going to discover. And Say I if you are excited about to get the tactics about cold calling, which is such an important and important topic in sales. Antonio, welcome. Hi, Gerald. Thanks for having me here. I'm sure everyone else is also yelling out I at their laptop. It's really, yeah, thanks for this. Good to get it going and help everyone else. I know I had an issue with cold calling. I got over it. I kind of went through all the ups and downs. So I'm happy to be here and share the playbook and build it with you. Antonio, thank you very, very much for having you here. Very, very grateful that we can do this webinar together for all who don't know um, me or Antonio. Antonio worked together with us, worked together with me. I have the, I've had the honor to work together with Antonio. And it was really, really a pleasure in that. And we will share a lot of things in today's webinar. What are we going to do today? And I mean, who knows of you guys, this guy here on the picture. This telephone won't dial itself. And the thing is, cold calling still works. And Antonio will talk a lot more than I do about this. So cold calling is essential. Um, if you have some comments, if you have some questions, please use the chat functionality. Please use the Q&As. It's an interactive webinar for sure. We will provide you with the playbook. Antonio will provide you with the playbook, but we are here for you to answer any kind of questions. And obviously at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session as well about all details towards cold calling. Who knows that feeling Yeah, when the moment you make your first ever cold call? I know it from myself, it's, yeah, shaky a little bit. Yeah, your voice is sometimes shaky, especially when you do it the first time, you don't know what's going on. But most of it is in your head, yeah? Your beliefs in your head, what the other person might think, is it a rejection, is it a no, and so on. And today we will uncover these things that you, like here, this guy have a really, really great feeling when you do your first cold call, or even if you have done already your first cold call, doing the next cold calls even with more confidence and with the right strategies and the right playbooks. The reason why I'm looking always to the left is here we have our chat. So again, as mentioned, if you have any kind of questions, just dial in into the chat, type your questions into the chat, and we are more than happy to answer all of these questions. So the feeling we know all yeah, is like a little bit having thousands of bad calls yeah, and then you finally have that one good call. And we want to transform you today from actually this side here yeah, to this side. Change in your mindset, providing you with the scripts, the structure, the templates to make that happen. Because... Cold calling is one of the most important tactics in sales, tactics to win more meetings, to win more deals at the end of the day, and most importantly, to hit quota, to get more of your deals and meetings in, and that's what we want to achieve today. Who knows about that number? It's a very, very interesting number we found also in research. And the research is quite um, accurate and also from this year. The research says that 
the average cold call success rate is two to three percent. What does this mean? Two to three percent. That means out of 100 dials you are doing, you get two to three good leads out of it where something is moving forward. And I'm more than happy that Antonio will share a lot more of that to increase this number. Yeah, this is an average number overall in several industries to increase this number and to make sure you make the most out of your time. Why are we here today? And what will we, will we be learning today? We cover four essential parts. One is the cold calling mindset, which is essential for cold calling success, that you get the tactics, the mindset, how to do cold calls. Then we go more into the ingredients for cold calling success, like already mentioned, the volume, what you need for it, how to do it, and so on and so forth. And then as the last part of the webinar, we go into the cold calling structure, the scripts and examples that you can use as a playbook for your own cold calling techniques. And obviously, Antonio is here also for questions and answers. So if you have any kind of questions, just drop it into the chat and we are more than happy to answer them. So what are we going to do today? We are providing you with a playbook to improve the skills and tools for doing great cold calls. That's what we want to do. And I'm very, very happy to welcome our guest speaker here today in this Kickscale webinar and give me a very, very warm welcome and a hands for Antonio. Antonio, welcome here to our webinar. It's a great, great pleasure to have you here. Antonio worked together with me at Bitmobin. I was very, very impressed by how Antonio was approaching cold calling from a mindset perspective, but even more from a techniques perspective. And I heard Antonio cold calling the whole day and know how many meetings he booked out of cold calls. And I'm very happy to welcome you. Antonio, welcome. Hey, thank you very much for having me here, Gerald. Appreciate the warm introduction. And definitely right. I'm glad you heard me making all those cold calls because of course you were my manager. I needed to make sure that you knew Maybe you weren't checking the details, you weren't checking the CRM to see the talk time. I needed you to get there, feel the energy. And like you said, right, you start out with the mindset. That's, I think, the first thing that you noticed. And it's the first thing that goes into a call. It's really just that mindset, uh, the tone. And I think for the audience today, that's basically it, really. It's, am I brave enough to make that first call? What if I make a mistake? And that sort of thing. But let's get this going. Gerald, do you want to maybe load the playbook and we can kind of go through it and walk through a little bit, uh, just yes. step by step to kind of get everyone up to date? Absolutely. Antonio, and before we jump in, mm -hmm. one question also for the audience. How did you get to cold calling? How was your first touch with cold? How did you feel and, and what did you learn over the last years Yeah, when you started first time cold calling? Okay, so the first time I ever got on the phone, it was at my parents' business. I had to run the phones when the secretary would take holiday. And so during school holidays, I had to answer the phone and then they would get business inquiries. And my dad was too busy. My mom was too busy. And I would just take a little note, find out the price for a machine and then call them back. And so I was always taught to be polite on the phone, which in retrospect, did me a lot of harm getting forward. Because then later on, when I worked my first sales job, you know, I was too polite, but on the other hand, at least I had some experience on the phone. I wasn't, you know, a stranger to talking to people I didn't know before. So that's how I got started, really just answering incoming calls for my parents and then also outbound calls in my first job, where really I was a recruiter and I needed to, you know, get to these people and let them see, you know, all the benefits of the job that I had on offer at that moment. Very, very nice. Yeah, thank you very much. Antonio for sharing that and let's as you mentioned mm. jump into the playbook so let me show the playbook to you guys and this is the playbook we are going to go through today we will send it also to you afterwards via email that you get some of the content out of this playbook and these are the essential steps we are going to cover today 
And as mentioned, Antonio, let's start really with the mindset. And let's look a little bit into the fundamentals for cold calling on the mindset perspective. And Antonio, mindset, what does this mean to you and how to prepare for the right mindset in cold calls? Yeah, I mean, you know, you'll see later on, there's that idea of smile while you dial. People know this. How you're feeling definitely comes across, right? People know this in an intuitive level, like that your mindset isn't just communicated by say, telling someone, oh, I'm happy, oh, I'm sad, oh, I'm sick, oh, I'm, I'm healthy. It comes across in the way you speak, the energy in your voice, the intonation. And for example, right, when you call your boss to tell him that you're sick, you, you kind of want to make sure he, he believes that you're sick and it's not just you calling to go and have a bit of a you know, drink with the boys down at the pub. And so you, in that call, you go, hey, Gerald, sorry, I can't make it. You know, there's beyond what you're talking, you've got that mindset, you need your boss to, to know, you want him to believe that you really are sick and you're not faking, right? And so it's the same thing with mindset anywhere. With the sales call, it's about like a realistic optimism. This is just another guy behind the phone. Don't be scared and be go into it hoping for the best. Just cool. He doesn't pick up. Okay, no problem. He picks up and he tells me to go and kill myself. Okay, no problem. He picks up and he wants to make a deal. That's good, but also no problem. It's this input folk, input centric mindset that you should have. That's all I can control is how many dials I make. All I can control is whether I stutter on the phone, whether I have my script together, whether I have like the playbook and whether I'm following that. That's it. If I call, I do what needs to be done and I succeed, cool. I did my, I did my best. If I don't get through to anyone and I make a thousand dials, that's true. You can't go in worried. You can't be... You can't be thwarting yourself from the beginning because, Gerald, if you get that success and you call the phone number of the guy who's primed and ready to buy and he needs the product and he's, he's just at the edge and all he needs is one phone call and you're, you're stuttering and you're a little bit scared and you that's not going to work. You're going to push these people off and your mindset, that's it. That catapults you to everything else. Every other thing, every little trick you need, every skill, every habit you need to build happens off of that foundation of mindset. Yes, yes, totally. So Antonio, when I hear you correctly, what you're also saying is really like the mindset is very important and also the outcome, getting away from the outcome. It's more like do the course, get in a good positive attitude, yeah, and don't think about the customer, what they might experience when you call them, but focus on your goal, right? Is, is that a, a nice summary? Of course, that's a good summary indeed. And just to mention that, right? Let's say you do call that perfect client, perfect prospect who's just about to buy, but he's just had a bad day. He just got cut off in traffic. He just got a bad email saying, you know, that uh, the geezer in his house burst and now his house is flooded. He's not going to be happy to talk to you. He might be the perfect person. You can't take it personally. So like you said, don't worry about the customer so much. Just focus on the input. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I totally, totally agree. So what are your, your three tips or so, Antonio, to really overcome this call reluctance? What, what can we give to the, to the listeners um, who probably have never done a cold call? Yeah, What's your tip on the mindset? How to get started? Yeah. Okay, so that's not true, though, because even if you don't think you haven't done a cold call, you definitely, you've definitely called your friend out of the blue when they weren't <laughs> expecting it. You definitely called your mom to say hello when she didn't, you didn't plan it. You have a Google meeting set up on your calendar with your mom. I don't think so, right? So you've all sent cold calls out. It's just you've never done it to someone you haven't spoken with before. Okay, it's no different. And that's the thing. That's the thing. A lot of people do, I mean, maybe even you and I are doing it now, Gerald, with our webinar voices. But a lot of people have a, call, a calling voice, you know, and they pick up the phone and they say, they, they start talking formally. Hi, madam, it's me from the company. How do you, do, you know, it's peculiar. So the first thing is humanize your, your prospect. They're just another guy. You would talk to them like you would any other person. 
you're not going to address them differently as you would anybody else. I know sometimes in the dark market, it's pro it's you know a little bit more formal to be proper, but then that's also how you would talk to your boss. So it's not, you know, humanize them. It's just another guy. He just puts on his pants the same way you do. They cook with water. Then the other thing, the second tip is do it. There's no point sitting around trepidating, worrying. If I pick up the call, maybe go, just try it. Really push yourself to it, do it. I mean, there's nothing more that I can tell you, which is, and maybe that should be step one. Step one should be do it. Just pick up the phone and call. Because the more times you spend, the more time you spend on the, on the phone, the more calls you make, the more natural you get with it. And then the tips, they just become fluid after a while because of course you realize that this person is human. This person's just as you were, you don't need to talk to them in some formal way. And then the third tip should be to have some kind of structure. Now you and I have the playbook. Back in the day, I just used to have a little sticky note that I had and it consisted of a couple of points on a line. The structure helped me because of course, with when humans talk, we can get off topic, you can move things over. And with sales, really, all sales is is deliberate conversation. That's all goal-oriented conversation. So I call you, we have a particular point in the call where there's the introduction. Then we get to know each other a little bit better. I needs gather you, I pre-close you, I close you. I need to have some kind of structure. Like you said, the playbook is here for us, for the people in the audience too. But maybe they find something else that works that hello, the middle part, goodbye. But having that means you aren't going in off the cuff. You aren't just randomly thinking of things off the top of your head and putting in a process that's not repeatable. Because if you have a good call, you want to be able to take that and apply it to the next call and the call after that. If you haven't got a structure, you had one marvelous call because you're a natural talent, then you have 10 bad calls because your natural talent didn't kick in. So to cap that off, first off, humanize everyone. Secondly, do it. Just pick up the phone and dial. And then third, have a structure. Love it, Antonio. Yeah, love it. And that brings us to the next point, yeah, which you already mentioned a little bit, like the ingredients of cold calling success. Yeah. Mm. I love the point you mentioned that you need structure because for sure there will be some events which you can't control, which will happen while you dial and also while you talk to people. And so you have to have your goal in mind and then come back to this structure. But before we start with the structure, let's jump once more into the ingredients for cold calling success. You mentioned already some, Antonio, yeah? yeah. Like volume was one of them, yeah? yeah. Um, and for the audience, you can access this playbook then as well. Um, but what else is here in besides volume and so on, Antonio? What are your hints for what to do outside of the mindset to be successful, yeah? Okay, well, first off, volume, you can't just ignore that, right? You could have the, Gerald, you could have the perfect, perfect sales routine. You could be a natural on the phone. You could have the script memorized. If you don't call, you've got no volume, then it doesn't matter, does it? Like, what's the point? Yeah, totally agree, totally yeah. agree. So then on top of volume, right, you've got to be confident. So this might come across to some people as arrogant, but you really have, you're calling this person with a purpose. You believe in your product. And if you didn't, then you wouldn't be at that company selling that product. You know, you've bet with your career that the product you're selling is good. Be a little bit confident. Show that. You know, at the end of the day, you want your prospect to trust you. There needs to be some sort of a human connection. And they don't need to be your buddy. They don't need to be your friend but they should believe that the person on the other side of the phone is an expert or is an authority or is someone that they can, you know, reliably spend their time with and invest in the product that this person selling. And the first, the bedrock of that is confidence. You know, imagine you went to the doctor, Gerald, imagine you went to the doctor and he says, huh, maybe you have an issue. Maybe this medicine helps you. Maybe you take a little bit of this medicine maybe twice a week, you're going to quit that, you know, you're going to leave that doctor. In fact, you're probably going to call up the, 
you know, the chamber of medicine and say, hey, guys, this doctor doesn't know what he's doing. Can you check to see if his degree is real? You know, it's the confidence. The, go the doctor knows his stuff, as do you. And so he tells you everything with this very wholesome, standard, strong manner. So confidence. That's definitely something you need to have an, an ingredient for your cold calling success. Then, like I mentioned earlier, the structure and flow. There needs to be, you know, a game, a game plan for you. And what happens is when you repeat this at scale, when you do this quite a lot, you'll get, you'll have a chart out in your head. So, okay, cool. I'm far, I'm done the first bit. I've done the introduction. Okay, now the hook. Okay, now the needs gathering. And you've kind of moved on from one to the next to the next. You know, and with that, with that structure builds a flow. And then you start talking to the person, like, like another guy, like the way I talk to you, right? So you don't ask for permission. You don't do things that you don't do in other conversations where you call them ma'am, call them sir, ask for permission, uh, say, hey, like uh, other like random things that cold callers tend to do. And also it allows you to be a little bit more curious, actually open with them where you can ask questions that you thought perhaps you wouldn't because you're too polite. And this was an issue that I had to overcome really is you understand that there's a gap between the problem that they have and your product. You want to ask them that. So how many salespeople are failing at the moment? But that's a, that's a sensitive question. That's not a question you can ask anybody. And if you've got that flow, you've got that confidence, then the questions that need to be asked can be asked. And it's important that you do that too, because they have that issue. They have SDRs who are failing probably. They have guys who are scared of the phone. And if you don't ask that, then they've done that disservice by never really forcing themselves to answer. And, totally. then, mm -hmm. and then lastly, persistence. Just volume doesn't come without persistence. And you won't get good without persistence. You've just got to hit at it again and again and again. There's really, Gerald. This is it, right? Like I said, if you've got the best script, you've got to battle test it. You've got to get good at it. You've got to practice. You've got to iterate and you master it to the point where you start doing all of these things completely subconsciously. But you don't get there without trying again and again and again. And that's the consistency. Just put up. And persist well, persistence is really a little bit more than consistency, right? Because it's consistency, but it's also with fortitude. It's you get back down, people put the phone on, put down on you. They might write an email to say, hey, your sales rep called me during an important meeting. How terrible of them. You've just got to keep going. Don't take the negatives. Don't take it personally. Every call starts afresh and keep at it and go at it again and again. Very, very nice. Yeah, Antonio, I 100% agree with these ingredients Yeah, because they are so important. And what our audience is waiting for yeah, is obviously the core structure. Yeah? You have, I'm very curious to show that to the audience, that you show it to the audience. And I'm also very curious that we do a little bit of a role play yeah, with that structure. yeah. So we can do that live here, that the audience sees how you do this cold course and how this works. But first, obviously, let's jump into the structure and how you do the structure and how does this look like in that sense. For that, I'm quickly sharing once more the playbook here where you see the core structure provided by Antonio yeah, with these three items here, the introduction, the questions, and the framing and the closing. And Antonio, tell us a little bit and also with examples, and I'm more than happy to um, do a, a role play afterwards yeah, with a cold call that the audience really gets the sense of it, how you do it with your voice, what questions you ask, because as mentioned, I'm very impressed by how you approach um, people on the phone. And let's jump into that. Thanks. Cool, yeah, so if you keep that up, introduction, of course, no call doesn't start without that. And this is where, again, tone and confidence come in. Um, Gerald, if I, I, call, if you, I call you and I sound a bit scared or I'm a little bit off or confused, you know, Antonio, what's wrong? What's happening? Now, it's even worse if it's a stranger that you've never spoken with before. This needs to sound purposeful. And you shouldn't sound like you're making a cold call. This shouldn't sound like a sales thing. Um, this is what a lot of people do. And simply because you're either trained this way beforehand or you're just a bit polite. And this is how I was. 
And so initially the, the mistake a lot of people make, very well-intentioned mistake, is to be very formal, like you're the concierge at a hotel. Hi, Carol. Hi, is this Sorry, I can't even, I've gotten to the point now where I'm already doing my normal tactics, but you know, I'm trying to, how you say, get in that mindset of a beginner where they talk very formally as if, like I said, they were concierge. And you can't do that. You've got to talk to them like they're a normal guy. And so the start for that is tone. And a big thing for me is to approaching you as if I've spoken to you my whole life. Now it's easy because you and I know each other. And that's a good way for a rep to practice it, actually. Because if you're on the phone, you've got a prospect on Jake. You're calling Jake at company XYZ. Practice saying his name the same way you say your best friend's name. So you say, hey, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. So that when Jake answers, it's, hey, Jake. Not, hi, Jake. This is Antonio from ABC Selling. You know, it's more like, hey, Jake. Yeah, this is Antonio from ABC Selling. Now, you can unpack that tone a little bit. But the idea is to create this, first off, a natural cadence between the, the two of us. It's a very normal way a conversation would start. So you immediately bypasses him putting his defenses up. Because when you call, you sound like the concierge. He puts his wall up. He says, this is a cold call. I don't want this call. This guy wants to take my money. That's it. Rather, you want him to say, oh, this is a normal call. This registers as a normal conversation I would have any other time of the day. And I probably could learn to trust this person. You want them to be open. So by saying, hey, Gerald, completely normal, good tone. Then what you're going to do is you're going to give a statement, which is who you are, where you're from. So it's Antonio from Kickscale, let's say. That's a declarative. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't tell him anything. But when you add the tone to it, what happens is the mismatch between the tone that you give and the words that you're using causes him to like buffer. And so when you say, it's Antonio from Kickscale, the intonation is like, you know me, we've spoken before. It's Antonio from Kickscale, you've heard of me, you know me, we spoke, we, we shared a beer maybe. So he's there thinking, hmm, Antonio from Kickscale, where do I? So the information that he reads on a verbal level is just a declarative. The information he reads on a tonal level is a question. And so the mismatch between that asks him to take a little, little bit of a confusion. And then he says, okay, more Antonio from, from Kickscale, Kickscale, Antonio, Gerald, what, you know? And so then he leads you on to that. Now there's a couple of, do you want to take up, do you want to ask a little question from that, Gerald? Yes, um, Antonio. So that means what you want to obviously build up is this connection that the people at the very first think, hey, this is someone I should know or I know, yeah, and it's not a complete stranger. And the second, second thing with the question, you want to really say, hey, is this to start your thinking process? Hey, this could be something valuable to me yeah, if I get the call, exactly. right? Exactly. Because just one thing also for the audience, because what people are actually thinking of is who is calling me and what can I get out of this call? Right. These are the two mm -hmm. things yeah, people ask them all the time. And if you don't answer these two questions or if you don't bring in some curious other questions that they have a benefit out of it, they will shut up and will will yeah will hang up the phone. So yeah, thanks for it, Antonio. Please please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. And you're right, Gerald. It's also what can they get from it? And if you're confident, they believe that there's something for sure that they can get out of it. You know, another reason just to go back to the importance of confidence. And a good way to more or less set this up for you because it's it's quite easy to say it, and it's nice for me to which practice that a lot to kind of come out here and pretend. But maybe the best way for someone who's never set out a cold call, like I said, when you're starting the, the opening, say your prospect's name as you would your mom, your best friend, your colleague. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. Get to that point where it's just completely normal. So when they do pick up the phone, it's quite easy. Put yourself in that imaginary situation where you're, call, you're calling your mom and you're just saying, hey, mom. Hey, or you're calling your boss. 
or you're calling your friend. Hey, hey Gerald, hey Gerald. Then for the next part, imagine that you've bumped into a friend that you really know back in the day at, at an airport. This used to happen to me all the time. This is what the situation that I imagined. So when I would travel, it was almost guaranteed that I'd see someone that I knew at the airport while I was waiting for my flight. And so it would always be a matter of grabbing someone from the shoulder and saying, hey, buddy, hey, Jake, long time no see. You've got to have that sort of tone. Again, put yourself in that mindset. And when you've got that, you, you can almost feel the situation happening. It comes across naturally that that's when you're talking to that person. Kind of makes sense, right? Totally, yeah. Antonio, what's next then? Okay, cool. So then from there, you've got what, what we've got there is introduction, right? Yes, so we have the introduction done. We have the questions. Now we have framing and closing. How to do that and what's, yeah. what's next? Because the ultimate goal, obviously, of a cold call is to book a meeting yeah, as an SDR and PDR or even to sell something depending on your industry but ideally to book a former meeting um, to introduce the product. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Cool. So now that you've got the introduction through, the, the next thing you're going to, oh, hold on a second. We've got a question. Should we take that live as well? Yes, please. Let's do the question. I think that's perfect. Um, thanks for that, yeah. So Sammy asked, what about if you don't know the name of the person you're talking to? Ah, oh, good one. Because that way you don't know, like you can't practice that, right? So instead of saying, hey, Sammy, hey, Sammy, and getting used to it to the point where you then say the prospect's name, huh, you would probably just say, hey there, or hi. Why not? I mean, you don't always ask your mom, you know, when you call your mom, for example, you don't say always, hi, mom, hi, mom. You just say, hey. So the idea there is the tone. It's not so important, right? That you know their name or you know, because it could also be that, you call a person called Joshua and no one in their real life calls them Joshua. Everyone calls them Josh. You're not going to open by assuming that this person goes by Josh. So it's, hey, Joshua, he might immediately click. Doesn't matter, right? He, it's the tone though. And that opens him up and that lowers his defenses. So Sammy, for you, it would just be a matter of saying, hey, it's Sammy from XYZ. And in that case, you would move from there. And after you've done the introduction, the next part, Gerald, is then to get their permission, to get their buy-in, to get some kind of thing. Now, permission, you never ask for it in the sense of, can we have this phone call? Can you give me a pat on the head? It's, that's just not cool. You know, it's, it's weird. It's like if you go up to someone at a bar and you say, can I take the seat? You know, you just sit down, you take the seat and you have a drink, right? So much the same way, you won't say, hey, can I, can I call you now? It's more a matter of, hey, I'm calling about helping your SDRs. Does that sound like something you have time for? Now, there's a lot of permission-based openers. Um, I think one that's quite viral right now is saying, this is a cold call. Do you want to roll the dice? A lot of people have had, had some success with that. Obviously, it always changes because you know, give it a month or two and then every single, pro every prospect will have heard that. They will have heard it several times and they will not be impressed with you. And so you've got to keep up to date with whatever your opener is. And there's, like I said, a lot. But you've got to get that buy-in from them. There has to be something. Because if you're just talking and you're out there just saying, you know, script line after script line after script line and they don't speak back to you, they could be super kind to you. They could be very, very willing, understanding and just have you on the phone for five minutes. If they don't say anything, you're not going to be successful. So you need to wait for them. And so that's why I stress the importance of once you've said that opening line, you pause, they will normally say something, and then you deliver that permission-based opener. So, hey, girl, it's Antonio from uh, XYZ Selling. Pause. You'll probably say, oh, yeah, uh, okay, Antonio. And then I say, hey, calling to help you out with some SDRs, come, you know, does it sound like something you have a minute to talk, you know, a minute to talk about? You'll say, yeah, I guess I've got a lot of SDRs. And then from there, this is the rapport building. Now, rapport building, Gerald, it's not asking this guy if he plays golf. It's not figuring out what school he went to and say, ah, oh, I love that school. 
it's just a matter of getting him to recognize that you're an authority. So it's not, it shouldn't be one-to-one. -one. It should be the case that since you're confident, since you're an authority, then this guy can start to trust you. Because those are really the pillars. You know, he's got to think you're clever. He's got to know that you're, you've got trust in your, in your solution. And that, of course, you're the guy to help him. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so from there, you're going to start probing. These are the questions where you want to build up a level of tension. It, it should be, it shouldn't be too easy. You know, if he walks away completely unchallenged and you ask him easy answers, easy questions for either, that have easy answers, there's no value add. If it's just, hey, Gerald, uh, would you like to make more money? Yeah, sure, I'd like to make more money. Okay, where's the tension there? Where's the, the reason for Gerald to challenge himself and really grapple with what I've asked? And you want to slowly increase that. You don't want to jump in right away to, so why, Gerald, do you think based off your management patterns, your SDRs have failed? That's, that's terrible, right? And so to get there, you have to use certain techniques. Now, this is jumping through the playbook a little bit, but basically you start, you want to use mirroring tactics. You want to active listen to them. You also want to label them. So when they talk to you, they're, that initial thing when he says, yeah, I will. So you sound kind of, you sound interested in it or, and you would really just re reply to how they actually sound. So the guy says, yeah, SDR, SDR success. Oh yeah, I, I have a minute for that. So, oh yeah, you sound, you sound stressed about it. And then when you label that emotion, it helps them psychologically express that further. They'll say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm stressed about it. We have a number to hit and really, I mean, we're doing okay, but we're not, you know, we're not, we're not at the levels we could be. And then you mirror him, you say, oh, you're not at the levels you could be. And what that says to him when you mirror, and I think a lot of people already understand this and know that, and you do, you do it naturally too. You know, your friend says, hey, do you want to go out on Friday night? Say, Friday night. What that does, what mirroring does, is it tells you, I've heard you, but I didn't understand you. Can you elaborate further? So you see, you're doing okay, but you're not at the levels you should be. He then goes and he says, yes, we have a new team. We have a new target. And he'll go into a little bit more. And then you can start to ramp up the questions, the, the, you know, the tense, the tension in the questions. Okay. And you, also, and you do that really by setting future scenarios. You want to get him out of the current emotional state that he's in now because there's a thousand things going on. You can't control that. You can't control whether the person you know, to the right of him in his office is talking loudly. You can't talk whether he's stressed, whether you can take him to a future state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take him to a state in the future and then start applying the questions. So he says, yeah, we're not at the levels we should be. You mirror him, he comes back with, yeah, we have new targets. I have quite a big team and I haven't really had the chance to train them as much as I would have liked to. And you say, okay, what level do you want your team to be? In the future, and, and again, you wouldn't say in the future. You'd say, you've got goals in six months. In six months time, what should their SDR team look like? What should their level of training be? What would you like their processes to be? And you start ramping it up and they'll tell you, you mirror them, they'll expand a little bit more. And then you come in with a pre-close. So now he'll tell you, oh, I'd really just like it that they're all trained, that they take matters into their own hands, that they update their knowledge by themselves, that they have a trustworthy source, and that they're all killing it. And then you repeat that back to him, right? So, okay. So Jake or Josh or Jill. You want your SDR team to be educated on them, like trained to a high level, updating their knowledge by themselves and smashing their number. Now, what would you do? And then he agrees and you say, okay, if I could do that for you, would it make sense for us to take a step further? You know, and then you've pre-closed him on that. You've got him into that future situation. He's thinking of different things. Now, of course, that's a bit of a... A rare situation. Most cold, cold calls don't get that deep. Most of the time, what you're really selling isn't the product, 
it's the meeting. And you have to be very, very clear. So it's, okay, well, let's get, let's get to the meeting. You want this and that. If we could discuss it on a meeting, would you be interested? If I could show you how we could prove that on a meeting, would you make time this week? Because that's what you're there to sell. You're not there to sell the product. You're not there to show, tell them about all the metrics you've hit, about how fantastic your sales book, your sales playbooks are, or how excellent your SDR team is. It's the meeting. That's it. And like I said before, you have to have that structure. That's why it's so important. Is because then you end up, you know, spiraling away and going all down the rabbit hole on your product. And yeah, we have a really good time to market. We can deploy quite quickly. We helped customer ABC with improve their lead gen by nine nine x ten x. That's not that's not the point of the call. The structure is: you call a stranger, you end up with a meeting. It's not you call a stranger and you end up telling him about your go to market strategy. It's not you call a stranger and you end up telling them about your, how you 9x some random prospect, some random client. No. The structure helps you keep focused and you have to remember you're selling the call. Mm -hmm. And that ties into the last part, the close. So you've got them in, you've built up some tension throughout the call, you've got an understanding of what they want. You then use that to book the meeting. Now, just as we know, a short call isn't very successful. And by short, I mean 10 seconds, 15 seconds, where it's high and buy and they put the phone down. Also, a long call isn't very successful. Now, I used to do this. A lot of my reps, a lot of my friends that I've seen used to do this. And they think that just talking on the phone, Gerald, if I get lots of talk time and we speak for ages, they think that's good. No, not really. If you're talking to some guy who's already going to have a meeting with you for 30 minutes, first off, what are you going to discuss on the meeting now? You, the minutes, you know, the meeting's going to be 30 minutes. You've just spoken to this guy for 30 minutes. Secondly, if this call was kept to maybe four minutes, five minutes, then that's six other sales calls you could have had, six other cold calls you could have had while you're talking to this guy. He was already a yes. Okay, he's a yes close it out, put the phone down, call somebody new. Nice. Mm -hmm. There are definitely a lot of people and certain markets tend to be more talkative than others, but there are certain people who are happy to talk. They've got nothing to do. And really ask yourself, if you are calling, you know, your persona is going to be someone that you really want to have time with. If there's someone whose time is valuable, someone who you can do business with, someone who has a real business problem, they're a busy guy or girl. They're a person who's focused on a thousand different things at once. They've got things, they've got business. So why are they on the phone to you for 45 minutes? Hmm? You've got things to do. You don't randomly call, just, you know, go out on the street and start talking to a stranger for 45 minutes. No. Make it short and concise. And again, this is the point of the structure is that if this guy's now telling you about, yeah, and I have three kids and one day they might be SDRs and no. So you want to close. You want to get in, get out. So with the longer calls, you want to cut that short, get them in. Cool. It's great talking to you. We'll do it again. We'll you know continue this conversation on Wednesday at 2 p.m. I've just sent over the calendar invite. Did you get it? You know? And with the normal calls where the person's got in, you said, cool. You want these three things. You want your SDR team to be well-trained. You want them to be updating the knowledge by themselves. And you want them to, to be smashing their quota. I can discuss this with you. If I can show you this on a meeting, do you want to join? Yeah, okay, cool. How about Wednesday, 2 p.m.? Cool. Okay, I've sent the meeting. Did you get them? Good. Hey, and then that's that. And part of the close also is you, you've got to esteem yourself, right? You're not just some sales guy with an unlimited, you know, infinitely empty calendar. You've got stuff to do. You have hobbies. You have friends. You have a whole life outside of work. So your time isn't free. It isn't valueless. So when you've confirmed the meeting, you've got the, you know, you've got the closing. Try your best to impress upon them that this is 30 minutes of your time too. So it's okay. Yeah, Wednesday is going to be packed for me. Of course, it's worth talking about this, but 30 minutes and no more. You know, you want to make sure that they know that there's 
something on their part that they owe to you. That you're not some idiot with an empty calendar. So you've got the close, the guy's keen to join, but that's now. You want to guarantee that he comes in the future too, that he actually arrives after he's put the phone down and joins the Google Meet or joins the Zoom. And so part of that is then saying, look, I'm actually shifting out an internal meeting that was would be rather important, but Wednesday too looks good. So, you know, get some emphasis on them, ask them, you know, there isn't any reason you wouldn't join these kind of small pre-closing questions. Then when you've got that, I typically like to send the email with the invite while they're on the phone. Because again, once they've confirmed that they've got it, once they've opened it, they've seen it, they're likely to click yes, they're likely to accept on the calendar. But also he now knows that you've heard, like he's aware that you're aware that he's seen the invite. He just agreed to it with you. And so he, and he's agreed to the reason for why as well because he said he wants to discuss it. It's his issues, his problems. And you've ramped up that tension to the point where it's a no brainer that he should talk to you about it. He promised you, he said he would be interested. He asked you to say, he asked you about the time. He asked you to send the, the calendar invite. He saw the calendar invite in front of you while you were on the phone. So it's very likely then that he'll pitch and he won't be a no show. Nice, Antonio, very, very nice from a structure point of view now i got also a ping from the audience we would love to do like this role play yeah where um i'm obviously first on the buying side yeah and just do a little thing on that to see how your voice is going how this is going yeah yes, because yes. i think this is very valuable to the audience to just see how this how this works yeah because i know how how you do that and i love that the audience sees that as well in uh, one example here, um, if okay. you are up to for obviously, let's do it. And let me just check here. Um, I have here someone who wanted to talk as well. Let me see if we can get them in here. And I'm promoting. Yeah, get them in. Yes. So Alex, I'm nice. getting in Alex here. So I'm Alex, can, can you hear us here? You are now a panelist. And you should be able to do that. And let me just check. We have you twice here, interestingly enough. Okay, I see Alex is rejoining. Yeah. He's so nice. We have to have him twice. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. Perfect. Welcome, Alex. Thanks for being here. I got you. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Thanks. Cool. So so Gerald, now that Alex is on, what's what's the plan here? So I would love, Antonio, that you, like Alex, you could be a buyer, like an SDR leader. Antonio, you have obviously your services in regards of cold calling where you are the expert in. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, let's do it exactly in that way. Alex, an SDR leader, yeah. Antonio, you are calling regarding your services regarding cold calling and, and let's do that. Okay, nice. And I'm, I'm going to be representing Kickscale here just for the purposes of this, huh? Nice. Obviously, very yeah. fine. Thank you. Uh, Antonio, my suggestion, uh, let me know what you think, but we can also turn off our cameras so it's as real as possible. Oh, that's smart. That's Please what you do. want. Yes. Because being able to read your face would definitely give me an exactly. unfair advantage. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. That's also a good recommendation, Alex, to all of our viewers here. Turn off when you do role plays training, turn off the videos because then it's a way more real. So, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is yours. Let's go. Nice. All right, Alex, ring, ring. Um, hi. Hey, Alex. Hi, who's this? Hey, Alex. Hey, it's Antonio from Kickscale. Uh, Kickscale, what, 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 what do you mean? Ah, Alex, we're the, we're the guys who help train SDRs. Now, I know we didn't put some time on the schedule. I know there's, you know, I haven't sent across a calendar link, but do you have a moment to talk about SDRs and improving their performance? Maybe, but how did you get my phone number? Ah, it's publicly available. I think you either spoke with a former colleague of mine or it's just like out there, maybe on your email footer. But really the idea and the reason I'm reaching out is just to see 
you know, how I could help you with your SDR team. I came across a couple of the content that you guys have written. I know you have a you know, small team and the people I work with tend to be in a similar position to you and they've really grown their SDRs, probably of importance to you, right? Yeah, sorry, probably? It's probably of importance to you, right? Yeah, I would say so, but I don't have too much time, Antonio, to be honest, on my hands. I'm quite busy right now. Yeah, sure, I would expect that. Probably only just a minute or two, really. I mean, your SDR team is probably more important than that, right? You you care about them more than just a minute or two's worth of your time. Good point there, yeah. yeah they're they're <laughs> my responsibility. Um, so they are your responsibility? Yeah, I'm leading the, leading the team right now. Yeah. You're leading the team? I am leading the team, yes. Okay. And how big is that team? We are four people right now. Okay, just the four? Yeah. All right, and how are you handling that so far? It's been going great. We've reached our targets for the year, so I can't complain, to be honest. Ah, you reached your targets for the year and you can't complain. So what was the magic sauce then, Alex? How did you get them to hit targets so nicely? Process, process, process. That's why I can say. That's good. Like that's uh, the reason I ask is the people that I work with. So I'm working with a lot of the heads of business development or directors of business development, and obviously they're hitting their number too, right? But next year targets go up. Next year your star SDR might stop performing. Next year a lot of different things can happen where you want to be prepped. Now you said you've got process, process, process. How are you updating that process at the moment? um what do you mean where where do we store the process physically you mean like as a document or uh, thanks Th alex that's kind of the question actually really if you had a system in place you know you had a proper repository full of content libraries books playbooks um that question would be quite easy to answer and so when you you know you spoke about process 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 being super important to you normally then you get asked that question, you know, how are you updating your processes? You could point to a single website or a single repository. I can point, for us, it's Notion. Um, you, maybe you've heard of Notion. We're using it to keep all of our resources in there. Okay, nice. And so you've got access then to playbooks from other, you know, experts and cold calling and other, you know, SDR important topics, right? Not really. We are mostly building the playbooks internally by our own. Ah, that's a bit circular, no? Yeah, it, it kind of is, but we have a couple of senior guys who have tons of experience and they've been helping out the juniors, especially. And those guys, where did they get the experience from? They just, you know, I take it they read some books or they turned on some external platforms or they've read things elsewhere. Probably also by experience. So they've been working as an SDRs, each of them for more than five years. And they're quite experienced from their previous jobs and companies as well. Well, look, the, if the numbers are there, and like you said, they've got that experience from it, then why not have them put their stuff in a more professional manner? Because Notion's, Notion's okay, right? It's a fine platform, but they don't get the knowledge sharing ability that they might get elsewhere. And on top of that, you said that they've got it from experience. Now, if they're doing something wrong, how would you know? Um, I, I suspect by the results, right? If they're doing something wrong, the results will not show up. Don't you think? Well, you've got caught the first off. Yeah, like we said, if the results are there, that's good. But they could always be better, no? Yeah, they can always be better. I mean, that's something we can agree on. Yeah, I mean, we could agree on that, sure. But what do you want to do about it? Um, what do you suggest? Uh, look, I'm just having a conversation here. To be honest, the people that I work with, we sort of make, we would work hand in hand with them with some of the best, you know, SDR experts out there, have them develop their own playbooks. So not what you have on Notion. I mean, that is good. But now imagine that scale out to 100,000 sales experts. And your sales team can then go ahead and draw on that. And it isn't just up to your senior guys to do all the heavy lifting because he needs to grow too. So your senior guy, that's experience that he's earned himself. That's effort he's putting into the notion himself. What are you giving back to him? 
I would say we're giving back a pretty good working environment and a pretty good yeah, but remuneration. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with sales. And that's where a platform like Kickscale might help you. Because that way, not only would you show your, your experienced SDR that you value him, you're making him put those notion docs into an actual formal sales process and a formal sales platform where, first off, the work is respected, it's shared, and he gets to get that external nod. So, but so tell you me, can also you. get the help from another platform, from other sales sellers too. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what's 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 the main difference then between the Skixcap platform you're selling and my current Notion system? So you want to know the difference between Kickscale and Notion? Yes, yes. And how interested are you in the answer to that? Just out of interest, Alex. Uh, depending on your answer, this might push me to consider buying oh, a license. Could... For you. I guess it's a license, oh. right? Nice assumption there. But the reason I ask is that if you are interested in learning about this, we could really set aside some time, maybe 15 or 20 minutes later on the week, and I can give you a proper demo. And when you get the feel for it, when you actually play around, click in, you'll see why it's better than Notion. Because you've seen Notion, right? You've played around, you've clicked with it. Obviously. You haven't seen this. So a phone call is not going to do so much. Let's hop on a call and I can show you. Yeah, sure. Can you share, share me and send me an email with some more info and some dates? Yeah, sure. So I have your email here. It's Alex at ABC. Is that right? Yeah, that's the right one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Look, I'm, a bit, I'm actually a bit packed this week, but I'll send something over to you, what, Monday, two o'clock? Let me check. Um, yeah, thanks. Sir. Get your calendar. That, that, that would be fine. Yeah, please also send in the email a couple of other dates, but that for now could be potentially fine. Yeah. Uh, potentially fine. Yeah, there is another there's another quarter review happening at, uh, in the afternoon, so I need to prepare for that. But Oh, well, then definitely we're not going to make it. Look, Alex, just take a look at your calendar. When would it work? Because you said you want to see the difference between this and Notion. It's worth 15 minutes at least. When do you think we can talk? Okay, let me check. How about Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the morning? Okay, let me take a look. I can move something around. Yeah. Okay, Wednesday at 10. I've just, give me a sec. I've just sent off the email. Do you get it? Let me see. Yeah, I've gotten it. Let me. Okay, yeah, cool. I confirmed it now. You should receive my confirmation. Very nice. Look, Alex, I'm going to put in the agenda over here. Just a bit awesome. more about what you're interested in. It's nice to know you've got the SDR team of four people. You've got the expertise and you're already using Notion. Um, look, I'm going to write that out and just make sure that I understand what you've got. Now, is there anything more that you want to see on our meeting? No, I mainly just want to explore Kickscale, to be honest. I just want to see what you're in, in real life, what you're talking about. Yeah. No, because then what I'll do is I'll put the extra legwork in now. And then on Wednesday, I can sort of just move some th in things around so we can talk. And then, yeah, we'll, is there any, and one more thing, is there anybody else from your team that you want to kind of uh, show Kickscale to? Um, for now, let's keep it to just me. Um, depending on my assessment, um, I can also ask for my team's feedback as well, if uh, we're moving seriously with it forward. Okay, okay. Well, I'll open it up anyway. So if you do want to add someone and maybe you want to put that senior SDR, he's welcome to join too then. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So, Alex, we've got this over. We can sh walk you through Kickscale and on top of that, just show you why it's better than Notion. And, yeah, other than that, it's good talking to you, and I'll speak to you then again on Wednesday. Perfect. Thank you, Antonio. Perfect. See you then. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. There we go. Thank Maybe you very much, guys, guys for us this longer role play than expected to be honest yeah so for our audience yeah, we will have everything recorded also what we do now because it's already 11 yeah but we wanted to make it as real as possible yeah and i'd like to get a quick feedback session from alex as well yeah what like the key points were yeah and to get your thoughts here on that that the audience sees that as well Absolutely. So Antonio, two things really made a great impression on me. Uh, one is your ability to mimic everything I say. Uh, this definitely moves, moves the needle forward towards me feeling subconsciously that you understand what I mean. And the second mm -hmm. part is your objection handling. So this is, so in every role play, I try to be as objective, uh, as 
harsh as possible and try to be like the worst buyer as possible, but you always handle the objections in a really creative way, I would also say. Sometimes even challenging me a bit, uh, which I did not expect and puts me a bit into the, the, to the back corner and so trying to say, hey, maybe actually let's continue and so on and so forth. So um, definitely really impressed by your objection handling, I must say, so. Oh, thanks, I appreciate it. And I'm glad you felt challenged. That's also another thing, right? Is oftentimes I've got the prospect feels like he's the king, king of the world, and he's just like some royalty and he can tell you to do whatever and he can speak to you in whatever fashion. And it's not the case, right? It's definitely a two way street. And so it's that there are real, and there, you don't just have to challenge the guy for the sake of it, but there are real questions out there that need to be answered. And if you have, if you have to be a little bit more difficult, if you have to give a little bit of kickback, do it. Give the kickback, ask them. Because remember, if this person is already hostile to you or you think being more polite to them isn't going to change it because you were polite to start and then they were hostile. So if they're hostile, you can say, well, you know, if you've got everything figured out, then why, how come you haven't launched? How come your notion isn't trending number one on LinkedIn? How come, you know, these types of things. Obviously, you you'll never be rude and never, ever lose your temper. But yeah, just kick back. Now, Gerald, nice. we've got a question in the chat. I see, I see. Yeah, very, very interesting question. Antonio, do you want to start yeah, sure. this, this one? And, yeah, and sure. Alex, thank you very much here for, for doing this role play. Really appreciate it. And let's answer the question here. And then to the audience, thanks for staying in there so long, even if we are already over time. We will summarize it, what you get also, and give you also the ways how you can access this playbook. And yeah, let's answer this, this question here. Yeah. Hey, Zoran. So thanks. So basically, he's Zoran's an SDR manager and he wants to know, um, you know, they run through the BANT process. So budget authority need and timeline to qualify a deal. And it's, it's been working for them. And Zoran asks, basically, you always insist, insist on setting an agenda and disarming the prospect at the get go. Would you not recommend? So, yeah, this is def this is different to a cold call then. Because you're talking about now an agenda for a meeting that you've had. If you can set an agenda on a call, perfect. Always do that. It's not likely though. Like sometimes you've got the win. You've already had, they've already agreed. They maybe already accepted the calendar invite. You can mention it. Hey, I will set an agenda. Sometimes you can't get on the call and say, hey, while you're on the phone with them and say, we're going to talk through A, B, C, and D. Normally, it's just enough for you to do it in the Google Calendar later on after you've sent the email or in your, you know, the calendar invite. But typically, yes, for the sales call afterwards, I like to set an agenda. And again, Zoran, it kind of plays back into the whole idea of structure. So with the cold call, you have that structure. You need to be quite deliberate about each part. You move from introduction, questions, pre-closing, close. Same thing, obviously, then with a normal sales meeting. You have an agenda with lists of points, but in your back of your mind, you also have a structure of, cool, introduction, get everyone talking, run through the agenda, pre-close them, and then move forward to the next meeting or ask for the close, right? Ask how likely they are to sign. So yeah, of course, I 100% back an agenda, whether you've agreed to it personally, I mean, publicly with them, or you have one personally that you just got written down that you want to kind of go through. I completely agree with you. And I would 100% recommend setting an agenda for your sales calls. Thanks, Antonio and Soran. Thank you for the question. We have also here a playbook on exactly that topic on meetings. I also totally agree. What we do typically is we have a predefined agenda in HubSpot, for example, mm -hmm. when you can load the appointment, send it out, probably make some slight changes. And then obviously before the call, you have an automatic reminder or even a personal reminder to say, hey, this is what we want to go through to prepare the meeting as best as possible. Yeah, but very, very um, important question. And, and thanks for this question. So yeah, thanks, Soren. Thank you very much. Yeah, from, from the audience. Yeah, how now to get this playbook? Yeah, also how to get further information on that. Yeah, and obviously what, you guys are getting and let me share once more here the screen we walked through the mindset the ingredients and the cold calling structure and this structure as antonio has written this structure we have some scripts and examples 
that you can share with your team, with other BDRs and SDRs. And we did obviously a very, very nice um, role play in here. And as you have seen, objection handling is also very important. We didn't cover all of that today. There will be a separate session on objection handling because objection handling is one of the most important parts when it comes to cold calling. There will be no closing without an objection, neither in sales nor in cold calling. So Antonio, also from my side, congrats on that objection handling. I know that Alex can be um, a hard buyer, yeah? And you managed that really nicely also with the mirroring part on uh -huh. that side. Yeah, thanks. Antonio, let's summarize it very, very briefly. Yeah? What are the conclusions you want to give also our audience? Okay, sort of. So the conclusion here is that cold calling is easy. It's just... It's easy. Don't let anybody tell you anyone, anything else, especially not yourself. Don't let you trick yourself into thinking cold calling is hard. It's not, it's easy. It's just mindset, tone, strategy. So the mindset, they're just a guy, they have a, you know, they have a problem, you have a solution. In fact, in your head, they should be happy that you're calling them. Then tone, talk to them as you would a friend. Don't be afraid to push back establish that don't you know don't sell yourself short with your tone and then strategy you have to have points get there quickly you have a list you know once you've got that list knock out those points and do so fast so that you can get on with your day and that they so can they awesome very very nice Antonio thanks for the summary how to get this playbook now yeah how to get this playbook and many more in the future what's next yeah next is we send you further information via email. Yeah, you get also free access to Kickscale to build your playbooks and have also in there the cold calling script. So you can just sign up for an account here and can build your playbooks, have some templates and resources in. And the full playbook, as with many others, you get directly on our Kickscale page. Yeah, you can get access to. All other resources like Soran, thank you very much for that great question. How to handle sales meeting is another playbook, which is also in the platform already. And you can get monthly here the right playbook to train your team and help your team with the right content. So this is just to make sure you get that. Yeah, you can get more and regular playbooks to improve your skills, like how to handle B2B sales meetings, what we mentioned, the art of social selling. Social selling becomes more and more important master cold emails and obviously also the great playbook antonio you did today thanks a lot for uh, presenting this playbook yeah and obviously these playbooks will help you to hit quota you get the latest tactics you get frequent learning from the best and even more important you get scripts you get templates and that you can get from kickscale for your users for only 69 per month and you get frequent access to all of this all of this know-how so you can directly sign up at kickscale.com and get all the access here and also ping us if you have any further questions or if you have any kind of resources you want to also challenge or have more than happy to provide you here with the access and obviously antonio thank you very very much for your time i really appreciate it and love to do that um, session together with you to be continued, I must say, because there is yes. a lot more which came out today in the cold calling <laughs> webinar, like objection handling, how then to set up the agenda in a meeting. I love how you do it, that you set the meeting directly in the cold call, say also, hey, yes, because this creates commitment, what you want, because one important thing is once you have the meeting, you want also to make sure that the meeting is happening yeah because otherwise it doesn't make sense so antonio thank you very very much from the audience if any one of you guys have any questions please contact here us and antonio obviously we will put the contact details also in our follow-up email and our follow-up message and then let's take it from there i see antonio we have another question which we is do. awesome from sammy so sammy thank you very much for the question do we um, have do we have like an extra two minutes, Gerald? What do you think? You absolutely, yeah. Let's let's okay. do that. And Sammy, thanks a lot. And yeah, burning Sammy has a, yeah, yeah. So Sammy has a burning question about how would you deal with I'm not interested from the get go. 
Cool. So you call somebody up, say, hey, you know, hey, Jake, it's Sammy from ABC. And they go, oh, I'm not interested. You say, you then, of course, you're going to give them the reason why you even called. So you say, you're, they'll come, oh, we're not interested. Then you go ahead, Sammy, and you'll say, well, the other business development directors that I work with are typically struggling with uh, getting their SDRs to hit quota. Is that not something you're interested in? And then you'll get the, well, there's two responses, right? Either you've missed the mark, or there's three the responses. Either you've missed the mark, he really isn't interested with that, he'll tell you no. Or he'll just be rude, hostile to you and say, no, still not interested in that. And thirdly, uh, otherwise it is an issue that they have, which in this case, it likely is the case. And then they'll go ahead and say, well, yeah, I am interested in that, but I'm not interested in you. Or they'll continue to be hostile. And then you're free to push back. So let's just say, Sammy, that they're hostile to you. And you said, well, okay, no, because Jake, the other, the other business development directors I speak to, they're, they're working with us to help their SDRs hit quota. You're not interested in that? Now he says, no, Sammy, I'm not interested in that. You say, okay, that's fine. Our solution, which, you know, our solution helps SDRs triple their number. But that's not interesting for you. Have a good day. You don't have to chase everyone. And you're not going to do business with everyone. So, you know, there's just, you've got to keep that in mind too. You can't turn every single person into a, into a sale. You know, it's not the case. There's this joke online that no interest is a level of interest. That's, that's not the case, right? You can't sell to everyone. And if someone's completely, if they're interested in being completely hostile to you, let them be. Put the phone down and call somebody else up. Because you have a list of thousands upon thousands of prospects, call them rather than call this than speaking to this hostile person. And so that's if they're hostile. And then if it does work, you say, well, so you're not interested. You're not interested in having your SDRs 3x their number. And then if he does, and he continues to be, you know, still a little bit hostile towards you, push back. They definitely push back. Because again, they're going to put, you're worried that they put the phone down on you with I'm not interested by. So push back a little bit more because at the end of the day, the, the alternatives are you push back and he ends up having the call with you or you keep being polite. He puts the phone down as he was going to. do. So yeah, Sammy, I'm not, in, I'm interested in that, but I'm not interested in you. What can you help me with? And you say, you, again, you, it's very good to use labeling here. Say, yeah, you sound kind of, you sound kind of upset. Have I frustrated you? And then, you know, there's this like, what have I done? Like, you know, you know, there's this almost this impetus of I'm a person too. What did I do to deserve this? You can't just be rude to people your whole life and talk to people this way. So it's, yeah, Jake, it's, you sound very frustrated. Has this call really bothered you? And then of course he doubles down on that or he ends up dropping that guard and being nice to you. And if he doubles down on it again, you can, again, try and combat that with, yes, yeah, Sammy, he'll be rude to you. Yes, yeah, Sammy, you are frustrated to me. At which point you just, again, end the call. There are other people to talk to. You're not gonna turn every no into a yes. I hope that helps. We see here a comment, yes. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, Sammy, thank you very much. Very, very good question. And obviously reach out uh, to us if you have any more further question. I want to say once more a big, big thanks to, to everyone here in the round attending us and especially to you, Antonio. And we will make this webinar available to you guys and looking forward to the next webinar to take this on as well. And thank you very much. Have a great Friday and talking to you very, very shortly. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.